today. And the only reason I thought of that topic is because we're near the end of the year. I think the Hopkins graduation for residents is in a week, and in two weeks we have the fellows graduation. So maybe it's a good time to look at it. And just to let you know that this segment is brought to you by Peanut Shoes by Goldenberg. They're really not paying us anything. We're buying the peanut shoes. But in case they wanted to pay us, everyone in the lab and, and the Felix Project thinks these are number one. And they're from New York. They're from Brooklyn. If you read about them, they're from Brooklyn, New York. And if they want to sponsor us, Goldenberg, we're here. Anyway, let's get back to business. And um, so you look at the residency and the fellowship and internship. Um, it's a lot of time, and uh, much has not changed, perhaps. So typically, finish med school, do an internship, do four years of residency, and you do one year of fellowship, though some people do two years of fellowship. So it's six or seven years, which is kind of on par with most of the other specialties. Some are longer, some are shorter. But it's a six-year process after four years of med school, four years of uh, college, four years of high school, and nine years of elementary school. So it's kind of the end of the, the road. And the question is, do you need all of those years? Do you need more time? I mean, if you think about it, if we did 20 or 30 years ago, six years, the amount of knowledge that has increased is exponential. Maybe you need to do seven years or eight years. Uh, you know, with duty hours contracting, uh, the uh, chairman of surgery orthopedics at Maryland a couple of years ago wrote an article showing, and he wasn't being critical, but that with limited hours, which have certain advantages, the disadvantage is you do less cases, and he was showing over a four-year period, an orthopedic resident would do one-third less cases, and so he asked the question, perhaps people need to do a fifth year, you get the number of cases. We know from many books and many uh, articles and many expertise, you need to have your 10,000 repeats. That if you want to do something well, whether it's playing guitar or playing the drums or it's playing baseball or it's being a radiologist, you need to have the talent, you need to have the knowledge, but then it's just looking at films. If you're reading CTs and you've looked at 20 pancreases, you have a certain amount of knowledge. If you looked at 20,000 pancreas, you have more knowledge. And we're no different than AI, right? Artificial intelligence, you need to see a lot of cases. The more cases you see, the more accurate the AI is. And deep learning is all based on looking at normals and abnormals and building up a repertoire, repertoire of cases. So in a sense, we know there probably is no great shortcut. So let's say you even said perhaps we need to do six years the question might be, and I'm not looking to shorten things, is there a better use of the six years? So, for example, this has come on and off many years. You need to do an internship. And the internships are very helpful, particularly if you're going into some of the surgical specialties or medical specialties. But if you're going into radiology, you end up taking a very easy uh, internship. Uh, one of our future residents in a year from now spoke to me about doing a local residency where it's six months of requirements and six months electives. They do little nights. So it's kind of a very low key process. And of course, if you were going into surgery, you would want a high, uh, high impact internship to get you really ready. So the question is in radiology, there's certain basic things we need to know. We need to, assuming you're not doing interventional, and maybe even if you're going to do interventional, you need to know the basic things of life support, treating contrast reactions, evaluating patients and the like, but it's not clear how helpful it is for you to be involved in a lot of the management that you're going to learn at best for one year, trying to survive that one year, and then never use it again. So perhaps maybe radiology and some of the other specialties need a very limited internship, maybe three months, where you'll learn a lot of those basic life support things. You learn a lot about evaluating patients, reactions, and all sorts of things, and perhaps that might be a better idea, and then you go straight into radiology. And then, of course, debate now comes in, in radiology and other specialties. When should you subspecialize? So if you're a surgeon and you're not sure what you're going to do, you do some OBGYN surgery, GYN oncology, you do some orthopedics, you don't do probably any neuro, but you do abdominal, you do thoracic, 
do a whole bunch of things, and then you kind of focus, and maybe you then do a chest oncology fellowship or an abdominal oncology fellowship. But what if you knew that you wanted to be a GI surgeon, you wanted to be doing pancreases? So the question would be is perhaps in your training, um, you would not worry about doing mastectomies and not worrying about doing hysterectomies. Maybe you should be spending much more time in the GI side of things, which would give you, perhaps you could finish earlier, but I'm not worried about finishing earlier. I'm saying, what about getting the expertise? So instead of doing or being involved in 50 Whipples, you're involved in 150 Whipples. Can we focus more? And so the same process in radiology. If you know you don't want to do mammography, why are you learning mammography? Everyone who does mammo has to do a certain number of cases, and it's really a dedicated person. You're not going to be dedicated in everything. It's not going to be that, oh, my God, I'm incidentally going to read a mammo today. Those days are over. The days that where a radiologist did interventional and mammo and fluoro and CT and MR and ultrasound and everything else, those days are gone. So perhaps we can really think about how it is that we can, if people, particularly if you know what you want to do, how do we do more of it? If you know you want to be a neuroradiologist, there's things perhaps you don't need to do. Mammo might be one of them. Uh, you probably need to do a little of peds, but not all that much peds. And if you don't want to go into pediatrics, perhaps you don't need to do as much peds as you do. Maybe you need to do more ultrasound. Maybe you need to do more CT, more MR, more research, more nuclear medicine. If you go into oncology, then perhaps nuclear medicine becomes important with PET scans, and mammography becomes less important, and peds becomes less important if you're an adult population. So I think the question is, do we need to really look carefully at people? Now, you can say, of course, is we want to treat everybody equally. And this way people can, you know, you may say, I want to do GI. And then after doing PEDS, you say, man, I love PEDS. Or after doing MAMO and breast imaging, you love breast imaging. So in some sense, that's one of the challenges. If you target someone to a specific area, you're not showing them the spectrum of what we do. And perhaps understanding the spectrum becomes important. Now, in the old days, when we took boards, everyone took the same boards, right? You took the same six or seven or eight sections regardless. If you didn't care at all about neuroradiology, you were doing neuroradiology boards, and you would not pass your board exam unless you did your neuroradiology and passed it. These days, I understand the boards, you pick certain subsections. So if you're not going to do neuro, you don't have to be certified in neuro. You just pick certain subsections. And perhaps this is really building on that idea that, let's be honest, we can't do everything. It's hard to keep up on everything. It's hard to learn everything. And we are focusing in radiology on value over volume. And value becomes on consultation. All the things that we add value to dealing with the docs, multidisciplinary conference, dealing with the patients, speaking to the patients, seeing the patients. So perhaps we need to figure out ways of making certain that everyone's trained in certain things like going to multidisciplinary conference or dealing with patients and being proactive with patients. That may be something that goes across all the different residencies, but perhaps you could target people. I mean, the reality is uh, once you finish college and medical school, you kind of often do know what you want to do. And I know people who change their minds. You always see people who do a year of residency in radiology then go into dermatology or ophthalmology or vice versa. So people do make mistakes or maybe they're not mistakes, but you have one thought process. And then after you get exposed, you think about something else. Um, we talk about the challenges even now doing fellowship interviews. We're starting interviewing uh, next month for fellows at Hopkins for July 2020. You'll be a second-year resident. Now, if anyone's listening, we want all the great second-year residents to be our fellows. But, you know, every once in a while, the complaint comes up. We're interviewing too early, perhaps. Um, we're all interviewing too early, and people can't make up their mind. They're only finishing their second year. The system kind of makes it difficult. Perhaps we'll have the uh, matches with a later interview date. But that's something people speak about has never happened. But I, I think you need to really refocus and rethink about how we need to do things. And I think it's a challenge because I think in a lot of institutions, 
the residencies are driven by the work that needs to be done. So the concern is how many residents are covering nights and weekends and where the residents are on rotation. And we are now doing much more elective time, but it's never clear that elective time is really in the, in the resident's best interest. Now, and I'm talking with residency, not from a senior faculty member position, but as someone who wants to see the residency work well. Now remember, one of the things we're discussing at Hopkins is, you know, we're like a sports team, right? You're like the major leagues, okay? You're the faculty, you're the major leagues. You need to keep getting new people to build your organization, to increase vitality, increase discovery. So you need to look at your residency as a farm system. The Yankees just brought up this guy, Torres, it's incredible. Last year, the Yankees brought up Judge, okay, incredible. This year, Yankees are number one. But those guys were developing the farm system and they were ready to make the big leagues. And the residency, you need to think about as a farm system. You have these people for four years and maybe a fellowship, maybe five years. And what you need to be able to do is train them to be your next colleagues, your next faculty, the people who are going to help you and work with you. And so then you need to think is, okay, if I'm going to train someone to work with me, how do I train them? I don't train them all over the place. <coughs> Maybe the training needs to be more focused. Maybe you do a month of MAMO, not four months. Maybe you do a month of PEDS, not four months. Because time is very, very precious. You don't want to be taking everything, I think, because there's so much to learn. If you think about what you need to know now in every one of the areas, you're just not getting through it. You're basically going very, very superficial. People don't read two hours a night now. You need to read two hours a night. But what should you be reading? Can you be more focused? Focus also goes not only from the clinical work, but also to your research. We know if you want to get grants, you need to be focused. If you want to be successful in research, you need to be focused. You're not researching 20 different things from breast to GYN to peds to abdomen to chest. You're really trying to focus on a several things. Maybe you're focusing on a technology. Maybe you're focusing on CT or MR or part of one of those things like, like a cinematic rendering or something of that sort. But you need to have the time to really be able to build. And when you have a program like we all have these days where there's just not a whole lot of opportunity to do what you want and not do what you don't want, I think it's a challenge. Now, obviously, there is a set curriculum. Uh, when I speak to our residency director, they go on and on about the set curriculum and the lack of flexibility and why we don't have people on CT because there's too many other rotations. Well, I'm saying that at the highest of levels, people need to rethink the process. They need to really, again, look what's good for that resident or that fellow what should be done for their career, for their future, and for the specialty of radiology. I think unless we can develop the next leaders in our residency, unless we can clone the people to do what we've been doing and do it even better, I think we're really in for a challenge. Now, um, you know, there's simple things like John Biacchino, I just see he notes that one thing we need to do is teach the residents to work with the technologists who know a lot more often than they do about many things. You don't have the residents rotate with the technologists. Maybe in some areas like ultrasound, you're a little bit closer, but in CT, you're just you're reading films, the techs are out there, they call you, sign the consent, they call you with a problem, patient has a contrast, an extravasation, a reaction. But should you maybe spend a month working with the techs, seeing how they do CT, what it is to move patients on and off the table, what it means to start IVs. Remember in the old days, we all started IVs. Now no one starts IVs. Maybe you need to know how. And again, rethinking the process of what we do and how we do it. Um, someone, Samir writes, we should know what not to know. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I think it means in part that you can't know everything about everything. And if you're trying to know everything about everything, you know less and less about anything. John Doris used to be head of pediatrics at Hopkins, which is a wonderful, wonderful person. 
And I remember when I first started here, he would say that being in academics and being at the level he was professor at head of pediatric radiology, he said that what happens is, you know, he was once asking me a question that I really wasn't sure. I was a first-year faculty. He said, well, he goes, when you become professor, become very high, you know more and more about less and less. And uh, I always remember that, and I have to admit, I do know more and more about less and less. I'm trying to not push the less on every day, but it is a challenge. There's so much to know. There's so much to learn every day. It's tremendously exciting, but you can't know everything about everything. Uh, I see Lauren. Hey, Lauren, what's happening in Minnesota? The residents actually scan patients. Well, yeah, I mean, we do some of that in ultrasound, but you know, um, maybe that's a good thing. Now, there are, there's legal things, of course, but maybe the, te- the radiologist should be sitting with the technologist, knowing the difficulties, understanding why breath hold is important, understanding timing, understanding how you select parameters for the scan. I think it really needs to, uh, maybe we need to rethink the process. Um, I think you can do a residency on CT. I know I'm biased, but the point is that we need to really have a good conversation on what needs to change as we go forward. Deep learning is going to change everything we do. Artificial intelligence is going to change everything we do. But I think at the same time, we need to really maybe use that as a way of thinking about how we need to restructure things. I know it's hard because people like structure, and the structure has been there, and you really aren't a free agent because the ACR, American College of Radiology, the – the, the uh, board for radiology requires certain things, but I think perhaps it needs to be a fresh look at that. Maybe nothing will change, but I think we need to be certain that we're doing the right thing for ourselves, for our trainees, and for our specialties. Specialty. And with that, I thank everybody for signing in. If you have any questions, I see there's no more questions, but um, just give me a call or email us. And... If those Gulenberg people are listening, we're all in favor of peanut shoes. Catch you later. Bye.